Forgotten, The Frozen North, Chapter 12, Approach The ride aboard the Scouticus Maximus was smooth, but there was just something about a moving bed that kept Sunny restless and unable to get to sleep. So, carefully sidestepping her sleeping friends, she made her way to the passenger seat and sat down, buckling in as Hitch continued their steady drive north. She looked out to the endless expanse of snow-covered landscape. Six hours ago, it was bare arctic tundra, so they were getting closer. I can't sleep, Hitch asked. Nope. How's the drive? The mayor replied. Uneventful, but I've got to hand it to Sprout and Candle Logic. This thing handles like a dream, Hitch said. Sunny decided to respect Sprout's wishes and not utter a word about the Red Stallion's career change considerations for now. She glanced back at the rest of the group, either sleeping or merely laying down with eye masks on, and noticed an absence. Zip flying overhead? She asked. Yep. She wanted to keep us on the right track, seeing as how so much of the landscape looks the same now. I'm trusting this thing for now, Hitch said, tapping the tip of his hoof on the compass built into the vehicle's console, which was showing a digital bearing of 10 degrees. It was almost directly northbound, if just a tad to the right. But as they got closer, that wasn't going to be much use without knowing precisely where they were headed. An aerial view would help where precise directional headings wouldn't. I'd ask if you really think there's something all the way up here, but you do kind of have the pictures to prove it. Hitch added. This place was sort of unexpected, even back in their day. It vanished without warning for a thousand years, and then reappeared with just as little warning. And the Guardians had to figure out how to protect it. So, any theories on what happened to it? Hitch asked. Nope. I can only assume whatever happened to the rest of Equestria 2. Sunny answered. You don't think... I mean, maybe there's a way that they've been up here this whole time, isolated from whatever happened? According to what was in that journal, the magic of the Crystal Empire protected the city from the harsh weather of the region. So I can only assume that this is going to get worse. Zip did say that there was some kind of storm in front of the mountain range, and I'm making a semi-educated guess that the city is in there. So conventional knowledge says that there would be nothing alive left up there, but we've been surprised before, so who knows. Well, if not, the cold might have kept some artifacts intact. I'm just hoping that it's not completely buried. Like, we have the tools to do some digging and ice chipping, but not unearth an entire city. Hitch told her. Yeah, I really hope this trip isn't a total bust. Sunny replied. They heard a dull thump on the back of the truck. Moments later, Zip opened the hatch as quietly as she could and floated down to the floor, coming up in between Hitch and Sunny. We may want to stop until daylight, Sheriff. Zip cautioned. Yeah, what's up? The stallion asked as he slowly brought the vehicle to a stop. We're coming up on the Crystal Mountains and the storm in front of them. Hitch checked the external thermostat, as well as the fuel gauge. Well, that's cold enough or we'll probably want to keep this thing running. I'll fill her up, then we can all get a few hours of sleep on stationary beds. Hitch quipped as he threw on his coat and hat and opened the door to head to the rear to grab one of the fuel canisters. Seeing how it was a quarter past two in the morning, Sunny figured that this was the best time to get some sleep before the first half of their trip came to an end. As Zip settled into her sleeping bag next to her sister, Sunny likewise unbuckled her seatbelt and walked to the back of the cab, where her sleeping arrangements had been laid out on the right set of seats. Carefully stepping over Izzy and Sprout, she climbed up onto the seats and slid into her sleeping bag as she heard the muffled sounds of Hitch opening the gas cap. Now that her bed wasn't swaying with the terrain, she found it easy to be lulled to sleep by the idling engine and blowing wind. Chapter 13, Her Last Act A long time ago, Flurry Heart, Luna, and Spike stood in front of the Crystal Heart, watching it slowly rotate as they listened to the muffled commotion outside. The citizens are assembled, Princess. There's no going back after this, Luna told her. I wouldn't be ordering an evacuation if I thought there was, Flurry replied. Not just the city, Flurry, Equestria as a whole. The relics needed for the ritual have just arrived on the train. Once this is done, Equus will be forever changed. No magic, at least for now. Pegasi will no longer be able to control the weather. One of the fortunate side effects will be the axial tilt. It will finally be restored and will not need to be maintained by magic. Day and night will cycle on their own. Lastly, the city will likely be lost to the frozen north if we alter the Crystal Heart's magic. If they don't need to focus on the sun, moon, or weather, then maybe they can bring renewed effort on helping each other. Flurry said, turning from the heart and going towards the large curtains, currently weighted down to resist the constant wind. 
Taking a deep breath, she passed through them, out onto the balcony, looking over the city streets and the crystal ponies down below, as her mane began to blow in the icy breeze. My citizens! Flurry began, her voice commanding and overtaking the howling winds that had been hammering the city for days. Dark times have befallen us. I know not what lies ahead, but I do know that it is no longer safe to inhabit the Empire due to this unending storm. Therefore, I am ordering an immediate and mandatory evacuation of the city. The train and every available carriage will be made available to all of you. I ask you that you take only what you need to survive. I do not expect for you to be able to return. Know that this is my last act as your princess. I know word has begun to spread around about the increasing unrest down south. I cannot advise you on what to do when you reach safer climates. Whatever you do, I implore you to spread the light and love of the Crystal Empire wherever you may go. I will remain behind with trusted allies in an effort to put a stop to what is to come. It has been an honor, my Crystal Ponies. Go forth, and Godspeed. Murmurs of uncertainty continued as they heard her Crystal Guard begin to bark orders, and advise citizens to return home to gather what food and necessities they could carry. They had drilled evacuations before, and before this time tomorrow, the city would be empty. Flurry stood on the balcony a moment and watched as the evacuation effort got underway, before returning inside to the Crystal Heart Chamber. Spike, I'm gonna go floor by floor of this place making sure it's empty and no one is getting left behind. I want you on the train out. She instructed. I'm sorry, your highness, but I'm not going anywhere. My place is with you. If this storm worsens as you keep warning us it will, I'm not going to rob you and Luna of a heat source. Conduct your search, Flurry. Spike and I will go to the train and unload the relics needed for the ritual. Luna told her. Unwilling to argue with her assistance, Flurry Heart ascended to the third floor, leaving Spike and Luna alone in the Crystal Heart Chamber. You didn't tell her, Spike remarked to the elderly Alicorn. We needn't shatter her resolve before everything is ready, Spike. There will be a time to tell her what will be necessary to see this through. But not yet, Spike. Not yet. Imagine this whole thing was a prank. Like, yeah, Flurry, all of your efforts, eh, they weren't really needed. That would suck. Anywho, let's get on to our diligent donators. Top donators are 630, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Only One Thing, and Sarua Ryan. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will Chris, Twinkie, Hadzaza, Riot Soul, Iron Sky, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.